can believe that I forgot about the timer. So sorry about that. So because the asymptote falls within the interval, it thinks there's a root. when there isn't one. So there is actually no root here. Uh, right, so we'll finish the thing. So this is potential sign change problems. Look at this one here. It's continuous. F of A is positive. F of B is negative, but I've got three roots. So that's just a poor choice of um, a poor choice of interval there. And look at this one. So this one is f of a is less than zero, but f of b is also less than zero. <gasps> I've actually got two roots. So once again, it's a poor choice. And then we had this one before, didn't we, where the, the interval covers an asymptote. So it doesn't matter. So things can go wrong with that, so you have to be careful with it. So it says now the graph of the function is shown. So the student observes that 1.1 and 1.6 are both negative and states that there are no roots. So where do we think 1.1 is on this dodgy picture? Do we think 1.1 is there and 1.6 is about there? So Explain by reference to the diagram why the student's incorrect. So for part A, so there are two, so the diagram shows two roots in the interval one to two. That's why we're incorrect. So it says use 1.3, 1 1.5, 1 and 1.7. Well, I want 1.1 as well. So 1.1, if you do f of 1.1, it gives you minus 0 0.476. If you do f of 1.3, it gives you 0 0.088. If you do f of 1.5, oops. Uh, One, two, three, it's missing one. If the UF is 1.5, we've got minus half. So this one, so I've got a less than zero and a greater than zero here. So between these two, there's a root in the interval between 1.1 and 1.3. This one's less than zero, so it's a root in that interval between 1.3 and 1.5. And then if I look at the, it seems random with it, so they're using 1.7, aren't they? Uh, so f of 1.7, which gives us 0 0.352. So that one is greater than zero, so I've got a root here as well. In that interval between 1.5 so I've got the change of sign and the graph. And you have to write that every time that the change of sign and the graph is continuous. Oops. There. Right, next bit. So example two. So it says the student observes the function f of x is 1 over x squared minus 2 has a change of sign on the interval minus one to a half. So it says f of x has a vertical asymptote within this interval, so even though there is a change of sign, it has no roots. Right, so let's have a think about it. So one over x squared minus two. So one over, you can just graph it straight away, but one over x squared is the, um, is the volcano, and then the minus two moves it down by two. So I've got an asymptote at minus two. So there is a graph there, isn't there? There are two roots there, aren't there? So between minus one. So if I wanted to solve it, 
So if I solve that equal to zero, then I'd, I'd have that's it equals, I'd have two is one over x squared. So x squared is a half. So x is the square root of it. So plus or minus one over root two, which is root two over two. So that's where my roots are, plus or minus root two over two. But if I look, so from between minus one, so my minus one is bigger than my root two over two. So minus one is here somewhere. And a half is smaller than my root two over two. So there's my half there. So I do actually have, we might have a vertical asymptote, but there's still a root in that in the um, interval. So there might be a vertical asymptote. But a root still does exist. The thing is, you can't use the minus 1 and the 0 0.5 to show it. You need to use something which goes around it. So maybe minus 1 and minus 0 0.1. So better to use minus 1 to minus 0 0.1 where the graph is continuous. There, there we go. What time are we on? Six minutes, 50 hour. So, so here we go, so we've got two graphs. We've got e to the x and we've got five minus x. So we've got e to the x here and I've got five minus x here. So we'll stick them equal to each other and then rearrange them. This is where my f of x bit comes from. We know from the first example. Oops. There. So what it does is that crossing point is the same as that root. That's what it's saying, that the crossing point is the same as the root. There. So we'll be similar to that, yeah. As I say, that's all in it. There, and there we go. And people forget that when you put stuff equal to each other, you're finding the roots of a, of a rearranged equation. I've got one more page to do, and then that's the last page of that lesson. So I'm going to do that now, okay? See you later.